The news has been relentless lately, and sometimes we do like to take a look at different stories to end the week with you. And that brings us right now to champagne and a type of progress in an ancient industry known for more classic brands like Moet or Cristal, the legendary champagne brand, which I have to actually tell you at one point was the source for a kind of a joking nickname for our friend Bill Crystal, which came up once when I stopped by Morning Joe. The only man who can forge a friendship between Bill Crystal and Fat Joe. We're calling him Bill Cristal. Oh! <laughs> I'm still just picturing Bill Cristal <laughs> and Fat Joe in a stretch navigator. Yeah. Um, a defining moment in that space that crystallizes or crystallizes for, uh, oh <laughs> for, for the uh, oh. for the electorate. This is uh, Count it out. <laughs> Did Jay Z ever lift the boycott on Crystal? He was talking about a boycott on Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal. It was Lloyd Banks who famously said, "The ice on my neck keeps the crystal cold." Yes. Also, a Bill Crystal reference that's just now being unearthed. <laughs> Fantastic, Ari Melber. The Crystal references, you know, they pile up now. That was mostly goofing around, but it actually relates to something real because there was, as referenced there, an effort to boycott Cristal Champagne. Why? Well, its chief at the time said that he would prefer it if American black entertainers did not mention or associate with Cristal. This is really true. Asked about it because he was getting shout outs in songs. He said, quote, what can we do? We can't forbid people from buying it. I'm sure Don Perignon or Krug would be delighted to have their business. Can't forbid black people from buying your French champagne? Get out of here, as they would say. And that was back then. Today, more artists and entrepreneurs are actually building their own brands and companies instead of coveting French champagne. It's a list that includes Diddy, Rihanna, and a host of rappers who partner or work with sovereign brands. In fact, they've worked with Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, and many more. And that brings us to an unusual figure to end the week here. Someone in business and culture, the company's CEO, Brett Barish. When Jay-Z moved beyond boycotting Chris Stahl, as mentioned there on Morning Joe and elsewhere, to competing it with, with his own brand, well, Jay worked with Barish on Ace of Spades Champagne. And Mr. Barish is not really a typical executive. He looks more like a cross between Ram Dass and Jerry Garcia, than some luxury company CEO. But he's forged these bonds with artists half his age, tapping into what is a rising interest in branding and ownership online and in youth culture. And we just sat down with him for his beat debut on our Summit series, trying to learn a bit more about his tipsy iconoclasm. What did you do that was different, say, than that old school European model? Let the brand be part of somebody's culture, part of their personality, or part of their lifestyle, part of their association, and it works. And I, I just think you can't overmanage brands. They're they're like I treat them like children. They're kids. <laughs> Some of those other groups are almost trying to just have a level of control that doesn't work or that isn't realistic. And you look at it more like if 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 different new. Folks, whoever they are, want to want to play in this sandbox. You welcome it, a hundred percent. So whether it's whether it's currency or or Wiz or or Little Wayne or Khaled, you know these guys, they're all different. Don't run away from when people approach you. You got to embrace the crap out of them because mm. that's a fan. So that's the, that's a lot of the culture side. Let's talk about the business side. How do you come into a space like that? that is as old as old can get. The hardest part is not listening to everybody because hmm. in, in, in a normal course, your industry, whatever industry you're in, someone's gonna tell you don't do it. And for me, it was, Jesus, you're launching Rosé first. Um, if, if, if this was Ari, Brett, why are you doing Rosé? Everyone's drinking Brut. Oh, I wanna build a name in Rosé first. You put it in a black bottle, why'd you do that? I wanna let's be pause, different. Let's pause on that. So what type of people were telling you no, don't start with Rosé. Everybody. Everybody in our, my industry, the trade, the distributors, the retailers. Most people, if they hear from the people with experience and the people with expertise and the people who, again, this is business, who've made money, if they all agree and say, don't do it that way, most people say, okay. What, what, what is it about this that made you do something different? 
it's if you ask, I'll put it, put it differently. My first six years are were complete hell, and it's because I listened to everybody. <laughs> okay, I listened. I listen to everybody tell me exactly what to do. And I think it's important for anybody starting a business. If you're going to go do something, you're doing it for your reason. you got to trust your instincts because it, it sucks if you make that decision based on somebody else. And 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 uh, why did you do it from the beginning? With? Why did you get involved? This is part of our summit series where we spend more time in these lengthy interviews, more in-depth, really talking to people who've reached a summit in their field. Brett also told us about the pandemic, being authentic, his views on legalizing marijuana, and some of the artists he's worked with. Before we go tonight to end the week, here are some final sizzle highlights. Normal doesn't live here. You've also said don't think too big. What do you mean by that? I couldn't step into a multi-billion dollar, you know, giant company, but I can build one. Um, from the ground up. Having a plan can be the worst possible thing because if you stick to it, you're screwed if you're wrong. If you pivot constantly, you can be successful. If I run out of ideas, I'll stop. One word to describe Jay-Z. Fan. Post Malone. I crushed him at, at uh, beer pong. <laughs> Lil Wayne. He's just so cool. No one in Latvia knows who the hell Lil Wayne is. I have a Drake bar for you. 3 a.m. in Germany, can't believe that they heard of me. <laughs> I wish I could hit you back with another bar. It's not about money. There's no quick way to get there. Just can, just do what you love. Be passionate about it. Do what you love. Tap your passion. And don't think too big. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here, I got to tell you. If you've never heard of Brett Barish, well, you heard of him now. You can go to At The Beat With Ari, our Twitter page, to get that full interview. It runs over half an hour in the Summit Series. Or you just go to YouTube. It's up now. And you can search Melbourne and Barish. You see his name there on YouTube and watch the whole, the whole in-depth interview. We got into a lot of different stuff. And it's been a week, so I'm going to end, as we sometimes do, with a question for you. You can find me at Ari Melber on any social media platform you choose. And the question is this. What drink do you need to end the week? We just talked to someone in the spirits industry. What drink would you have after a week like this? I will tell you mine. It's only fair. A bourbon on the rocks. You can go visit me at Ari Melber or at arimelber.com, and let me know what drink you might want going into this weekend.